A student is not a vessel to be filled, but a torch to be lighted. And only the one can light a torch who is on fire himself. More than half a century, millions of people who are seeking the truth rush to yoga capital of the world, Rishikesh. Nestled in the foothills of the Himalayas in northern India. Town, which got its name in honor of the ancient sages, Rishis, is located on the banks of the sacred river Ganges, which, having just descended from the mountains, begins here its long journey going through the whole of India. From time immemorial, Rishikesh has been a place of pilgrimage for spiritual seekers, and it also attracts tourists from all over the world with its blissful energy. There are many ancient temples and sacred places here. The environs of Rishikesh are the starting point for pilgrims before they begin their ascent to the legendary shrines of Himalayas. Rishikesh became a widely known place among Westerners due to the musicians of the Beatles, popular in the 60s, who studied meditation here in one of the ashrams. Since then, a huge number of schools of all types of yoga and meditation have been opened in Rishikesh. International yoga festivals, various seminars, retreats and yoga tours are constantly held here. In 2007, in Tapovan, the most touristic place of Rishikesh, the Kriya Yoga Ashram Hiranya Garbha, astonishing by its grandeur, opened its doors. 
The ashram has become a real place of power for Kriya Yoga practitioners and a temple of true meditation. The ashram was built according to a special project taking into account the proper distribution of energies in space-time. The building is crowned with a majestic dome located directly above the meditation hall. The meditation hall is surrounded by 16 columns, and along the perimeter of the hall there are 16 recesses, caves for deep meditation. This amazing ashram was founded and built by the currently living realized master of Kriya Yoga, Swami Shankarananda Giri, who celebrated his 75th birthday in 2022. Swami Shankarananda Giri personally practiced Kriya Yoga for over 60 years, having taken the initiation as a child at the age of 12. Since then, he settled in one of the ashrams in the Indian state of Odisha and began to lead a life of renunciation, devoting every day to tireless Kriya Yoga practice and servicing to his teachers. At present, Swami Shankarananda Giri is a teacher in the Kriya Yoga tradition. He belongs to the lineage which descends from Mahavatar Babaji through world-renowned masters such as Lahiri Mahasaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar and Paramahansa Yogananda. To honor the memory of great masters of the lineage, Swami Shankarananda Giri made their sculptures with his own hands. Now these statues adorn the altar in the meditation hall of the Hiranya Garbha Ashram. Swamiji was born in Rambha, a small town in Odisha state in the very east of India. He was one of the children in a large family of ordinary citizens. As his birth happened just on the eve of the sacred festival of Janmashtami, the day of Krishna's apparition, particularly revered deity in India, his mother decided to give her child the name Krishna. Little Krishna grew up as not an ordinary child. He did not show any interest in book knowledge, but devoted a lot of time to yoga practicing on a lake shore or under a shady tree. Having noticed the boy's ability to yoga exercising, the teacher at the school entrusted Krishna to demonstrate asanas for students during school Hatha Yoga classes. However, Hatha Yoga was not something like sports for Krishna. Feeling that yoga is much more than gymnastics, during his practice, he focused on his breathing. Kriya Yoga – an internal spiritual practice based on breathing. The goal of Kriya Yoga is complete mastery of your breath. As Swamiji says, only by becoming a true master of your breath you can come to Samadhi, true state. So, Kriya, as I said, Vayu Sadhana, Vayu Sadhaka. Breath control is self-control. Breath mastery is self-mastery. The breath can enter into Brahma, as breath is Brahma. So breath can bring you to Brahma and then you can enter there and get Samadhi. That will be your breathless state. So, in this form, 
we practice to achieve the formless state kriya yoga is a very ancient teaching on a person's spiritual development passed down strictly along the line of succession from guru to disciple Kriya Yoga has its own lineage and it is called Gurumukhi Vidya. This is Brahma Vidya. Brahma Vidya means you have to learn from guru to disciples. It is always transmitted from guru to disciple so difficult to find uh, own guru and to find real knowledge because real knowledge can come inside us only through guru some people they are saying they learned through baba ji maharaj they learned from lahiri mahasaya they learned in dream they learned in so many ways but practically it is not possible kriya yoga has very old tradition the master and a disciple the disciple has to take initiation that initiation is very important if you really want to learn kriya and teach kriya first of all you have to be and good student to be a good master it is not that you just read some books maybe 10 books and out of this 10 books some essence you took and you write one book out of the 10 books that is not your own knowledge that is not even practical knowledge one who practice kriya yoga he himself or herself became definitely one great teacher brahma sadhaka or brahma sadhika if you practice proper then you can teach proper also 12-year-old Krishna was initiated into Kriya Yoga in the simultaneous presence of two great masters, Swami Narayana Giri Prabhuji, who was the nearest disciple of Sri Yukteswar Giri, and Swami Hari Harananda Giri, who studied with Paramahansa Yogananda. While demonstrating the first Kriya techniques after the initiation, One of his teachers was surprised to find that Krishna not only performed the techniques properly from the first time but had already mastered them perfectly. Then Prabhu Ji entrusted Krishna to teach the techniques to the rest of adult disciples who had taken initiation with him. After the initiation, Krishna moved to his guru's Prabhu Ji ashram and began his deep sadhana the boy's family was always aware of krishna's desire to become a monk and therefore calmly accepted his choice to leave home and settle in the ashram about a year or two later being blessed by prabhu ji krishna baba as the inhabitants of the karar ashram called him at that time settled in the ashram of his param guru Shri Yukteswar where along with the diligent practice of kriya yoga he performed a lot of very different work as krishna baba was busy working around the ashram at daytime he practiced kriya yoga at night going without sleep for long periods of time due to discipline and diligent practice He made progress very quickly in mastering the high techniques of Kriya Yoga. At that time, 
Krishna Baba officially accepted sannyasa, monastic ordination, and got a new name, Brahmachari Shankarananda. About at the age of 35, he joined the ancient Giri monastic order, where, in accordance with his spiritual achievements, he was awarded the title of Swami. Having achieved the highest states of yoga and having received the blessings of his teacher Paramahansa Hariharananda, Swami Shankarananda Giri began to teach Kriya Yoga to people around the world. Since 1976, together with his guru, as well as on his own, Swamiji traveled to different countries, giving seminars and teaching techniques of Kriya Yoga. Guruji used to say, airport is my home, I'm constantly at airports. For a very long period of time, nearly within 45 years, he had been traveling around the world. His moving from country to country, from city to city, took him from 8 up to 10 months a year. One must have divine love to make such an effort and travel all over the world. Of course, an ordinary person is not capable of doing in such a way. As for me, I have been studying with our master for more than 15 years, but there are European disciples who have been studying for more than 40 years. Oh, I'm Gabi Thiel from Germany. I'm disciple of Swamiji Shankaranandaji and also Acharya. Gabi is the most long-standing Western disciple of Swami Shankarananda Giri. She has already been studying with the Master for nearly 50 years. She was the first who invited Swamiji to Europe with his lectures and seminars. After meeting the Master, Gabi was impressed by the depth of knowledge taught by young Swamiji and then she was filled with the idea of giving Western people a chance to get acquainted with the authentic teachings of Kriya Yoga and become disciples of a real master. I know Swamiji for more than 48 years and I came to know him in uh, 1974 because living in the middle of Europe we were kind of like in this spiritual hype of um, in improving the way of life and that was common those days and we had the idea to exchange some technological knowledge to India and learn some spiritual knowledge from India and bring it to Europe. That was the idea of a group of people, like seven people, we were some, maybe we were spinners, maybe we were intellectuals, I don't know how to call it, but we were thinking, what can we do for the poor countries, how to improve their living, especially in the rural areas, and how can we get more spirituality into Germany, German life, there was some imbalance we felt and we were thinking, how can we do? We went to the ashram of uh, Suyukta Swachi and we also met um, Hariharananda and of course we met Swamiji. And we didn't know anything about Swamiji before, but we were thinking, we were talking about our idea of exchanging spirituality against technology and other improvements for the rural areas. We had the idea from the Nations Health Organization, from the United Health Organization, to grow algae as a protein source in rural area in India, like Bhubaneswar, for example, or Barikai, or Odisha, those days it was Odisha, today it's Odisha. So we explained to him that we would like to grow spirulina maxima, which is today famous everywhere here. We wanted to offer to grow it 
as uh, and dry it and then offer it to the undernourished children. And in return, we said, we like to have a spiritual teacher in Germany. I mean, a real one, not those people singing and dancing on our shopping malls and roads. There was no substance to it. We didn't find that. So we were asking Haryananda and Swamiji whether they could imagine to send us somebody or whether they would be willing to one day come. And uh, so at some point he agreed to start a project in Balikai, which is now today a place of Haryananda's descendants. But uh, he purchased that land, Swamiji did, with the help of a lawyer. He started to build a pond where we could grow the algae and he promised us to come to Germany to teach yoga, to teach Kriya Yoga. And we were very, very glad about this. At present, Swamiji is a teacher for the whole Gabby's family, including her son Harold, her sister Linda and Linda's husband. This family is not the only one among Master's disciples. Lots of people from India, Russia and Europe also learn from Swamiji with their entire family. When I read books, I've never thought how people met with teachers, masters. I even didn't think that such a case could happen to me too. But here it is, and I'm glad for it. Each of my visits to the ashram, to my guru, was at least eight months long. Eight, nine, ten months. That's how I came with my youngest son. Now I'm coming with two my sons. Visit in Germany, Spain, Romania, Belgium, Italy, Ukraine, Russia and other countries, Swami Shankarananda Giri accepted a large number of spiritual seekers as his disciples. And I know uh, Swami Shankarananda Giri, uh, to whom I say Baba, since uh, many years. It is, think, I think, something around 18 to 19 years. I was a young boy as I came the first time to India uh, to meet him uh, for my first journey to India. I met him the first time actually in Italy in uh, one of his programs in the north. Uh, it was the program in Verona with my father and uh, we learned, uh, we got initiation and we learned uh, Kriya Yoga from Baba and from that time uh, I was uh, I'm practicing the meditation and taking a great advantage of uh, Baba's teachings. Despite the fact that the Master has never been married and has no children, at present he has his largest family. He calls all his disciples as his children, and sincerely takes care of them like a mother. I would say a grace, something very special and very auspicious to um, meet someone like Baba, who uh, is uh, a realized monk, is a realized person, and uh, who is a real benefactor, something, someone doing some, some really good things for, to mankind, to people also. During all his life, he took so much care uh, of so many children, so many uh, individuals, uh, just by teaching Kriya Yoga, but not only that. He is a real father, he is a Kriya father, he is everything to me. Baba gave me everything, in the sense, the breath, he shown me the breath, how to breathe. Until unless we breathe properly, we are not born yet. So the Baba gave me the rebirth, I'm ever grateful to the Baba. As he was in uh, Puri, and uh, I used to go there, as well as by my guru, Ms. Paramahansa Haryaranand, told me 
since I was working in Bhuneshwar, he told if, an, if anything happened, you go to Swami Harinan, uh, Swami uh, Sankaranand Giri. Then frequently when I have got some little problem also, as a guardian, I used to go to him and cry a lot. And at that time, my children were very small. At the age of, the elder one at the age of seven and younger than five. So he, from, actually, I can't express his uh, affection um, and uh, like a brother, father, friend, whatever you name it. To me as well as to both of my friends, son, I can't express that period of what I gained from him. Now also, if I'm thinking about my past and with connection with him, uh, it now also tears come to my eyes. See, he has done a lot for me. I came first time in India in 2001 to teach yoga with my sister. And it was some events which guide us to reach the Kriya Yoga Ashram. I met Baba in that time. He received us, me and my sister, with so much love. We were quite lost here in India, somehow. And he took care of us like a real father. I felt in him, I felt in him so much support. We first met uh, uh, Baba with uh, Arya Rananda in 1985 in Paris. A friend of us uh, told us that they received the two gurus and uh, invited us to, uh, to meet them. We got initiated in uh, 1987. After that, we used to see him in uh, south of France uh, from time to time. And first came in Rishikesh in... Uh, 2007, uh, for the inauguration of this ashram, 15 years ago. And uh, so, from time to time, we still uh, come here. Baba, just I want you to remember the time when you went, you came to our house and uh, in our family and we had a, sm a very small baby and how you took care of her, Carol, and the dog, Fjord, who loved you so much. <laughs> he always followed you. You were his master too. Thank you, Baba, for everything. I felt always Baba like, like the guru, like the light guiding all, you know, in all aspects of my life. When it was difficult, the most difficult times, he was there with his love, with his patience, with his advice, always saying, don't worry, meditate, don't worry, meditate. Many people, they used to come in a very pity condition. And naturally, naturally, people go to a sadhu or shant or a mandir. When they are in shock stage or in agony like that, and within a short time, he make them very peaceful. That I have seen. Because since 40 years, I am almost in continuous contact with him.
2014 he started a new deeper stage of teaching disciples and stopped traveling around the world. In the 2000s, Swami Shankarananda Giri concentrated his efforts on opening Kriya Yoga ashrams and developing natural medicine and child education in India, devoting less and less time for his seminars abroad. Master is the founder of English medium schools in Rairakol and Bhubaneswar, a free boarding school for orphans in Vaishnav Dori. He opened two hospitals practicing naturopathic and Ayurvedic treatment, established several Kriya Yoga training centers in different countries and Kriya Yoga ashrams in several localities in India. He was constructing schools and uh, orphanages for orphans, who, for children who are alone and uh, lost their parents. And he did that a lot in, his, um, in the region he's coming from. He's from Orissa. And uh, me, my family and my friends uh, always had time to visit also these schools. And we really can say Baba um, is uh, taking care of the well-being of, of the people. On the, um, physical uh, perspective, on the social perspective, on the educational, from an educational point of view, but of course also on a more spiritual level. I saw how he builds. He builds schools for children, he builds ashrams. There are a lot of plans to build an international boarding school for children from different countries. Swamiji's disciples coming to visit their guru are constantly amazed at how the master manages to keep so many existing facilities running simultaneously and keep opening the new ones. All his deeds are selfless, and what the teacher does, he does for everyone disinterestedly, like a philanthropist and at the same time so highly professionally in all areas in which he only does this. I don't stop being amazed at this, rejoicing at this. When I see how much he works, how much he does, how he does it for everyone, I have a thought, how little I do. Those begin to visit me, what can I do? And although now it is not possible for people who are interested in spirituality and Kriya Yoga to meet Swamiji in their native country, new disciples still can find their teacher visiting his ashrams or by meeting him in the sacred places of India. There is a lot of interesting information in India, and of course not too many people can get it. But there are a few persons who possess very accurate information. One of them is Guruji. Of course, I'm very glad from the bottom of my heart that I'm acquainted with this person. And that's somehow my life goes. Sometimes I visit the ashram and meet him. Therefore, of course, I'm grateful to the higher power for such a great opportunity. The stories of disciples' acquaintance with Swami Shankarananda Giri are often full of amazing coincidence, which in an absolutely incredible way formed a chain of events that lead them to the Master. Some of these stories were collected by his disciples and published in a gift magazine for the Master's 75th anniversary. It is interesting to note that fate led a large number of disciples to Swami Shankarananda Giri after they had read the world-famous book Autobiography of a Yogi 
by Paramahansa Yogananda, written back in 1946. So we met with Baba in 2006, and uh, previously, before, I read uh, an autobiography of a yogi, and I just knew I have to find and meet uh, the master of uh, this lineage. And it took some time, maybe a year and a half, and uh, Baba came to my town to Vilnius, and it was like a dream coming through. Not only disciples from different countries are the children of Swami Shankarananda Giri. Having the status of Maha Mandaleshwar, Swamiji patronizes numerous monks, being the oldest of them in terms of his stay in monasticism. The master had been leading a monastic life for over 60 years. Having lived for many years in renunciation among the monks, Swamiji, however, warns spiritual seekers against trying to lead too ascetic life, leave worldly activities and withdraw from family for the sake of yoga practice or meditation. It is not that suddenly you became monk, Kriya Yoga is a technique. Through this, one can enter into proper Samadhi. Therefore, no matter what type of a person, either is a worldly person, household person, even a monk, or anyone, The Master says that external renunciation will in no way help to attain the highest states of yoga. Real inner renunciation is necessary to comprehend one's soul and the Divine. When a person, by an effort of will, has torn himself away from the material, he is physically in renunciation but his mind is constantly occupied with those material things that this person is now deprived of. When material things constantly surround a worldly, family person, they do not represent such a value for him as for an outwardly renounced ascetic, and the practice of meditation will come much easier to him. In his book Kriya Yoga Darshan, Meditation and its Metaphorical Explanation, Swamiji wrote, In long gone ages, monks and saints led ordinary lives. They were married and had children, whilst at the same time being highly realized. Lahiri Mahasaya and Sri Yukteswarji are recent examples of realized people who led family lives. Swamiji teaches that true inner renunciation cannot be attained by willpower. To achieve this state of mind, the yogi is helped by techniques of Kriya Yoga, which everyone can practice while being at home. It takes only three days to learn one cycle, one part of the Kriya, that is called fast Kriya. In three days, you will be able to learn this and then go home and practice that. Go anywhere, go to your daily life, remain in uh, home, remain in your job, whatever you are doing. To deepen their sadhana, Swamiji's disciples visit the Hiranya Garbha Ashram. 
where their meditation reaches a new level. When the ashram was built, the master was in thought about choosing an astrologically auspicious day for the inauguration of the ashram. He had two dates to choose from. One was in November, the other one in August. If he would have chosen the November day, the ashram would have become a very commercially attractive place. But if he would have chosen the August day, the ashram, on the contrary, would be far from material gain, but at the same time it would become a place of true spirituality and deep meditation. The master told that Sri Yukteswar appeared to him in a dream and demanded that the inauguration to be held strictly in the August day. Swamiji did so in 2007. In August of 2022, the inauguration of the ashram hospital took place, and now disciples while visiting the ashram can undergo pancha karma and other Ayurvedic treatment. Probably I say nothing new, but every disciple of our Guruji considers the ashram his or her home. Everyone feels his real paternal care, and it is important for us to remember that he is actually our teacher and a great person on the earth. For me, he is the greatest person on the earth. And so it's great to be next to him, to receive knowledge and his energy. And I also want to confirm to be worthy of my teacher. And it's not so easy. When we come to the Guruji's ashram, we feel tremendous care for ourselves. Of course, I would like to invite everyone who can come here. It is very honorable to take an initiation into Kriya Yoga exactly in the ashram of Kriya Yoga, exactly from the Master, from the realized Master. Many of the Master's students also note that by practicing Kriya Yoga meditation at the Hiranya Garbha Ashram, they physically feel the work of energies in their body that gives them better understanding of their own practice and inspires them to deepen it. When we come our Guru, we start to understand that we can activate our brain, our neural connections, and uh, we can maybe first time activate uh, our, uh, the cells of our soul, because in reality our soul is absolutely uh, real energy and real body. Arati, Parampara Master's honoring ritual, is held daily in the ashram as well as morning and evening guided meditations that help disciples with the blessings of masters to bring their practice to perfection. Yeah. 
the secrets of the effectiveness of Kriya Yoga techniques lie in their authenticity. Swami Shankarananda Giri strictly ensures that the techniques he transmits are practiced unchanged and always remain exactly the same as those taught by Lahiri Mahasaya and Swami Sri Yukteswargi. The Bhagavad Gita says that if the technique is not based on the scriptures and does not correspond to them, then instead of following the path that leads us to realization, the practitioner can develop ego, stubbornness, mental rigidity, desires, anger, and cultivate harmful energies. In his lectures, Swamiji often tells how the description of Kriya Yoga techniques are encrypted in the texts of the well-known scriptures, such as the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, and even the Bible. In Balikai, he had his little hut made out of straw, where he got his samadhi, where he stayed many, many years before he uh, started out to teach the world. Parallel, the little ashram in Bhubaneswar got started. It was a compound, maybe double size of this room, double size of this room, walled in, and he had built already in a few months a brick house made out of two rooms, uh, his room, a guest room, a kitchen outside, and a tiny little temple, that was all. They had running water and a little electricity for a few hours a day. So that, but already then, people would come in the evening after work for his blessings, for his teachings, for his comments on a horoscope difficulty, and for talking about Bhagavad Gita and all the other holy scriptures. And he would take us to festivals to let us know what, what, is, what is Durga Puja, what is Kali Puja. We, we didn't have any idea those days. While Swamiji knows perfectly all the scriptures and constantly quotes them in Sanskrit to illustrate the techniques of Kriya Yoga, he claims that he has never read books. No one of his inner circle had ever seen him reading a book. He received all his knowledge from meditation, mastering it directly through his own spiritual experience, but not through his intellectual understanding. The master claims that having gained knowledge in this way, the yogi can recognize the encrypted descriptions of the techniques everywhere, not only in the scriptures, but also in religious rituals, ancient myths and customs, and even in temple architecture. Native language of Swami Shankarananda Giri is Oriya. He also speaks Hindi and English. He writes books in all of these languages. By numerous requests of his disciples, in 1994 he wrote his first book, Kriya Yoga Darshan, Meditation and its Metaphorical Explanation which was published in many times in different languages, including Oriya, English, German, and Russian. In this book, the master explains in detail the practice of Kriya Yoga from a scientific point of view, and tells how and why this practice helps the spiritual development of individuals, and also demonstrates how the techniques of Kriya are connected with the events that the scriptures tell about. For deeper understanding of Kriya Yoga by those who practice yoga, 
The master wrote his treatise on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Considering the scripture solely through the prism of Kriya Yoga meditation. As it is known, the eight step yoga system of Patanjali prescribes gradual mastering of yama, niyama, asana, pranayama practices, and so on, up to samadhi. As a rule, people try to practice the regulations of yama and niyama by setting limits for themselves through willpower. Swami Shankarananda Giri teaches that true observance of yama and niyama cannot be achieved by willpower. The qualities and traits of character, and consequently the behavior of a person, are determined by the state of his mind, mutually coordinated work of his sense organs and organs of action. If you want to control, then control indirectly, but through yoga, that is, through meditation. Patanjali Yoga Sutra Performing breathing techniques of Kriya Yoga meditation, the practitioner automatically develops his true qualities of Yama and Niyama. As it is said in the scriptures, Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayuhu Tomeva Pratakcham Brahmasi Namaste Vayuhu Vayu means air. Air means our prana vayu, the breath of life. This Kriya Yoga is based on breath of life. How you have to control your breath, then everything is controlled automatically. If you want to control your mind, it's very dangerous. If you control directly, if you interfere directly to the mind, then I'm sure one time again mind will come back to you with many difficulties, hundred times turbulent. Mind can create big problem. Therefore, it is said, don't touch to any of your sense organs directly. If sense organs are controlled, then also it is not very good. Scripture says, Indriyanang Mononatha. If you want to control your indriyas, means sense organs, then you have to control your mind. Mana. Mind control directly is not good. Mana nathastu maruta. You have to control maruta, means your breath, vayu. Therefore, it is said, Namaste Vayuhu, Tomeva Pratyaksham Brahmasi. You are the real Brahma. In this earth, the human being, what we are breathing through the nostrils, that breath of fire is practical Brahma, the real Brahma. This Brahma, we need to practice, that is called Brahma Vidya. Swamiji's new book, 
The Cosmic Astrology of Sri Yukteswar Giriji was published in 2022, where the master explains the relationship of the human microcosm with the macrocosm of the universe. He based his explanations on the scientific, astronomically reasonable approach to the study of astrology, which was formulated by Sri Yukteswar. Among people interested in the Vedic culture, you can find information about the sequence of time eras changing. Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. According to the most common version telling about this phenomenon, each of the eras lasts an inconceivable large amount of time which is difficult to compare with scientific data on the existence of our planet and its life. However, in 19th century, the master of Kriya Yoga, astrologer and scientist Sri Yukteswar Giri, found that a serious mistake was made in this calculation of the eras. Based on astronomical data and having found confirmation of it in the scriptures, such as the Manu Samhita, Sri Yukteswar established a fundamentally different sequence and duration of time eras and outlined the essence of his discovery in his book The Holy Science. According to Sri Yukteswar's teaching, now humanity exists at the beginning of the ascending Dvapara Yuga. So we observe increasing of human abilities to perceive of deep, ancient knowledge, which was inaccessible for understanding by people of the recently begun Kali Yuga, the era of total ignorance. Swami Shankarananda Giri studied cosmic astrology being guided by his gurus, Prabhuji and Paramahansa Hariharananda who were followers of Sri Yukteswar. The teachers gave to Swamiji a few keys to knowledge and willed him to learn the rest of knowledge on his own. Being able to gain knowledge directly from meditation, Swami Shankarananda Giri became an astrologer within just one night. Swami Hariharananda taught astrology and palmistry to Shankarananda Baba, Kalika Baba and me at the same time. To our surprise, Shankarananda Baba became a master of cosmic astrology in only a few days. I believe he is the rarest among the saints. Within him the highest wisdom, profound meditation, and amazing work abilities are combined. Swami Primananda Giri, disciple of Swami Hariharananda. During his life, Swamiji complied countless horoscopes, initially making calculations manually and later having written his own astrological program. Swamiji gives the most accurate astrological consultations, calculating not only the positive and negative influences of the planets on the fate of a person, but also the place in the astral body in which his or her particular problem is localized. Paying special attention to such places during practicing Kriya Yoga techniques a person can directly influence astrological problems. Swamiji also gives recommendations how to impact on the person's planets with the help of special Bija sounds. The Kriya Yoga practice helps to apply the knowledge of cosmic astrology more effectively and the knowledge of cosmic astrology helps to deeper understanding of Kriya Yoga. That's why Swami Shankarananda Giri also teaches cosmic astrology to his disciples who practice Kriya Yoga.
Swamiji says that it is not necessary to look at the sky to understand the astrological influences on a person. The entire solar system and the entire zodiac fit into our spine. Therefore, an integral part of the teachings of Kriya Yoga and Cosmic Astrology is an astral anatomy of human being. By the way, it is not for nothing that when designing the Hiranya Garbha Ashram, the dome of the meditation hall was divided into 12 sectors arranged in strict accordance with the zodiac system and the altar in the hall is located clearly at the base of the north-south axis, which is reflected as in the firmament, the axis between the intersection points of the solar and lunar ecliptic of Rahu Ketu, and in the astral body of a person, a spinal column with seven chakras disposed over it. According to Kriya Yoga teachings, a person's karma is accumulated and spent through the coordinated work of a five-element system from which the universe is created from – soil, water, fire, air and ether, chakras, the energy centers of a human body, stars and planets of the solar system. It is possible to change a person's karma, character, thoughts and behaviors, as well as the elements surrounding him, only by working on the astral level. It is exactly this work that genuine Kriya Yoga techniques imply, helping to work out the accumulated karma faster than it would have worked out in the natural course of events. Swami Shankarananda Giri traditionally takes part in the Kumbha Mela, festival of spiritual practices, which is held every few years in various holy places in India. Prayagraj, Haridwar, Ujjain and Nashik, where the master keeps a tent camp and invites his disciples who wish to take part in this great event. The organizers of the festival also give the master a place of honor in the column of the festive procession of spiritual leaders of different faiths and schools. Swami Shankarananda Giri is highly respectable among government circles, and he is a spiritual teacher for some well-known and high-rank members of society. The teachings of Swami Shankarananda Giri are unlike the other spiritual teachings that we may be accustomed to. When he started lecturing, I found that his knowledge was completely different from what I had read before. Swamiji never offers guidance to people how to live what actions to commit, what actions to refrain from, in what way to treat or to look at certain vital situations, etc. The Master does not teach the material aspects of life. His teaching is focused exclusively on spiritual ones. By Kriya Yoga practicing, Swamiji personally passed through the spiritual path up to the ultimate goal of achieving realization. And this is exactly what he teaches each of his disciples.
Baba always he begins his class talking about the breath, ends his class talking about the breath, and hold the secret is lies with the breath only. Whatever the see, whatever the activity we have to do, we can correlate with the breath. Even wishing somebody's birthday, we can correlate with the breath. If somebody is not well, we can heal with the breath. We can do wonders with the breath. That's what Baba has shown us. The breath is everything to me. That's what Baba has taught me. So Baba is teaching us to to understand our breath and to understand what breath is. That this breath is the connection with the soul and that this breath is able to take us from the manifested in this body to the unmanifested, to what we are in truth, beyond everything. Baba, thank you. You, like Sri Yukteswar, is saying to us that you are here not to make disciples, but you are here to make masters. And always is saying to us to find the master inside Hiranya Garba, our own master, deep inside Agnya Chakra the seat of the soul. I'm uh, Dr. Sunita Gupta. I came to Kriya Yoga Ashram uh, in October 17, and I took initiation from Babaji. It was such a nice moment, though I am born and brought up in this land, but I always had different idea uh, that my scriptures, mantras, whatever I recite, they carry very different meaning and I was trying to find out the answers from someone who really can satisfy that my uh, spiritual hunger. When I came here, I met Babaji and uh, I had interaction with him and I told him that whatever I had been searching, my search has ended here and uh, trust me, I am here from 17th onward. Somehow, I don't feel comfortable in any other place under anybody's guidance other than my Kriya Yoga Ashram. And of course, Babaji is the ultimate guru I have in this birth. And uh, after I took initiation, I listened to his discourses and uh, whatever he speaks, how he speaks. Uh, I will say that I have got liberation from all my fears, insecurities, which had been there in my mind, here now in this birth only, here only, and whatever he speaks, every time he speaks, it is something very different. It, his words goes deep down into the recesses of my heart, my mind, and uh, I truly feel very happy, very, very, very fortunate, very blessed to be here. One of the main goals that Swami Shankarananda Giri set for himself is to raise the level of his disciples even higher than his own. Here I just want to say, what is Kriya Yoga? You know, the moment you come out of a mother's womb, you enter into this body with the first breath, first inhalation. The moment you breathe, the first, that is your first inhalation. And from that day, from that first day, the counting will start how many times you are breathing in this body, how thousand times, how many thousands and how many millions or brilliance, it is all, the, your breath will start counting. In a day, 
or in an hour, how many breath, breath is there, and in one day, how many breath is there, and this is the way that much of life force, that much of breath is allotted to you. That much of breath was given to you. This is your limitation. You have to breathe that much of breath in this body. Then breath will finish. You will exhale the last in this body. Therefore, it is very important that is not in your hand. You even cannot say, okay, now I have uh, two millions of breath in my hand. I have to breathe in my lifetime. You cannot say this. Or five millions of breath I have to breathe in my lifetime. You cannot say this. Therefore, any exhalation can be the last exhalation. Once you exhale the last, once you exhale, that can be your last exhalation. You never know. Therefore, from the very beginning, you have to think, okay, this is my opportunity. Now I breathed. And nobody knows. When I breathe, when I exhale, that breath will come back again to this body. That is not in your hand. But if a Kriya Yogi will practice this breathing technique, the proper Kriya, then it is under his control. By practice of a Kriya, by practice of this breath technique, you can always enter into a state that you have a victory on your birth. Now, in this lifetime, you will stop the a system always. In each breath, in each inhalation, you are inhaling means you are born in each exhalation you are dead all the time death and life death and life is going on so this from your first inhalation up to the last exhalation is your life period between this period as you are doing so many things in this life, first of all, breath is everything to you. But in our material life, from our young age, even up to old age, all everything very precious to you. Why? So many European and Russian people come to India. I think all of us, we want our realization, we want to understand our soul. It's the main problem that all our life we dedicate only for surviving. All everything is very important to you, but breath itself is the most precious one in this body. If you don't breathe, nothing is happening. So we never take care of our breath. We never think of our breath even. But from the very beginning, scripture says, Tapaha Sadhaya Ishwara Pranidharani Kriya Yoga. Here I have to say, what is Ishwara Pranidhana? That Ishwara Pranidhana itself is Kriya Yoga. Your inhalation is Ikara, your exhalation is Rakara. 
ఈ అండ్ రా ఇన్ బిట్వీన్ ఈ అండ్ రా కార ది సౌండ్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ బ్రెత్ ఇన్ బిట్వీన్ దిస్ బ్రెత్ ఈజ్ స్వకార స్వయం అహం దో ఇఫ్ ఐ వాంట్ టు డిఫైన్ స్వకార స్వయం ఈజ్ దంత అండ్ ఇస ఈశ్వర ఈజ్ తాళభ్యాస హౌ వన్ కెన్ చేంజ్ ఫ్రమ్ తాళభ్యాస టు దంత బై ప్రాక్టీస్ ఆఫ్ క్రియా ప్రాపర్ ఇట్ ఈజ్ పాసిబుల్ దిస్ క్రియా దిస్ ఈశ్వర ప్రణిధాన ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ ఈశ్వర పురుష వన్ హూ ప్రాక్టీస్ దిస్ ఈశ్వర ప్రణిధాన హీ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ ఆర్ సి హర్ సెల్ఫ్ బికేమ్ ది పురుష విశేష ఈశ్వర ఇన్ యోగ సూత్ర ఇట్ ఈజ్ సెట్ ఇఫ్ యూ కంట్రోల్ యువర్ చిత్త బై కంట్రోలింగ్ యువర్ చిత్త ఇఫ్ యూ బ్రీద్ ఈ కార స్వకార ర కార మీన్స్ ఈ స్వ ర ఈశ్వర ప్రణిధాన మీన్స్ ఈశ్వర ప్రాణ ధారణం వన్ హూ ఈజ్ హోల్డింగ్ దిస్ ఈశ్వర ప్రాణ దెన్ హీ ఈజ్ పురుష విశేష ఈశ్వర ఇన్ యోగ సూత్ర ఇట్ ఈజ్ సెడ్ క్లేశ కర్మ విపాక ఆశయ అపరామృష్ట పురుష విశేష ఈశ్వర యు యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈజ్ పురుష విశేష ఈశ్వర దాట్ బ్రెత్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ ఈశ్వర బ్రెత్ హ్యాజ్ ఆల్వేజ్ అ ఫోర్ స్టెప్ ఆర్ యూ కెన్ సి త్రీ స్టెప్స్ పరా పశ్యంతి మధ్యమ వైఖరి పరా ఈజ్ ఆల్వేజ్ ఎగ్జిస్టెన్స్ ది బ్రెత్ పశ్యంతి విచ్ ఈజ్ ఎంటరింగ్ ఇన్ టు యూ మధ్యమ విచ్ ఈజ్ బిట్వీన్ యువర్ ఇన్హెల్ ఎగ్జిలేషన్ అండ్ ఇన్హెలేషన్ బిఫోర్ యు ఎగ్జెల్ దట్ ఈజ్ మధ్యమ ఆఫ్టర్ యువర్ ఇన్హెలేషన్ దిస్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ మధ్యమ అండ్ వెన్ యూ ఎగ్జెల్ దెన్ యువర్ ఎగ్జిలేషన్ ఈజ్ బైఖరి విచ్ విల్ ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు ది పరాశక్తి సో దిస్ ఫోర్ స్టెప్ ఆఫ్ breath it is already said in yoga sutra when one is practicing proper technique it has proper technique that technique that breathing technique can be shown you while you will be initiated into kriya yoga it's not Disciples who attend Swamiji's seminars, online meetings and his guided group meditations are greatly benefited by the personal contact with this great master. I took initiation and then my life changed. I practiced meditation many years ago in another school. But after receiving this initiation, I felt the real meaning of the meditation. Through his guidance, I felt what is the qualities of a guru, a master. I felt the meaning of uh, life, having a a guru a master after he made me a, an astrological card i received also some good advices related with my planets the position of my planets and then that was very very helpful for the events i've had in my life 
which were not very pleasant. I was fully involved in my private life. I moved to Germany and uh, I didn't do this spiritual life. But then, after some years, when I came back to Moscow and you were there and you were initiating the second Kriya and I just dare to come to you and ask that you give me the second one and I promised that I will practice the first and the second one and you believed me. I'm still very thankful for this. I'm still very thankful for this. And since that time, I'm practicing Kriya and um, I can't live anymore without this practice. This is my best friend. This is my help. This is my any kind of medicine. When I need something, I do Kriya. I breathe. And um, for sure, as everybody say, I'm very, very thankful for you that you found me and that I was not lost in this ocean of material life, that my life is not just for nothing. Thank you very much. I can hardly say how thankful I am for receiving Kriya Yoga, to receive initiation into Kriya Yoga, because that was the most, the greatest present I ever got, and probably Swamiji was the most important human being in my life, because I learned so much of him. And I'm just happy to see if people follow him, even if it's only for some time, it's a blessing. I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, he's a very artistic person. He's a very, uh, not ordinary person, very wise. I'm very happy that I could uh, even meet him and uh, to touch to his uh, infinite knowledge. Uh, he gave us so much uh, about uh, cosmic astrology. Uh, about uh, the knowledge how to breathe uh, proper, uh, about uh, ancient knowledge of yoga. The Master communicates with his disciples not only in the form of teaching, but also answers their questions privately. You can even call by telephone, you can speak your experience, this is the way I'm practicing and I'm having these experiences. It is very important for master to correct these experiences. Otherwise, the disciple can go enter into hallucination instead of a meditation. The disciple can enter into fantasies instead of a meditation. The disciple can enter into a speculation instead of a meditation. But in Kriya, it's a very little chance, but still then, we always correct our disciples time to time. And then they are corrected and they practice the technique. They have many different development in them, physical, mental, psychological, and definitely spiritual development, the true spiritual development. Many memories are precious, but the teaching is the most precious of all. It's uh, very simple, it's very deep, it's very true, it's about you, about me, and uh, only through true thing uh, that is and that connects us. It's about breath, long and deep, peaceful breath, breathing in and breathing out. And uh, that's the lesson, the main lesson 
that I've learned from Baba. And from this, then many other things change in life. But just breathing in and breathing out with presence, with awareness, and uh, as much as is possible to remember in uh, everyday life. Uh, Baba, I'm very, very, very grateful. <laughs> Once you are telling something, it seems something so complicated so far and the mind tries to to disclose it but it doesn't work with mind and when I try to do what you say it is to breathe and to breathe myself then finally little by little it becomes uh, uh, evident and for me it's the most amazing gift to find, to find my Guru. We are very much lost in this age of Dvapara Yuga, where we are so much caught in the material world. And there is a lack of love and devotion so without meditation, without being guided through this ocean, we feel a bit lost. So to find the Guru, to find the Master who is realized, who is able to teach us how to meditate, how to come back to our own divinity, how to find this in ourselves. That for me is the biggest, the greatest gift. And this is something which I can never, ever give back. I am a disciple of Guru Dev. Gurudev is my master. I don't know how I can express my state in other words. To make Kriya Yoga learning more convenient for his numerous disciples in different countries, Swamiji has trained several Kriya Yoga Acharyas, who are chosen for teaching their compatriots in mastering Kriya Yoga techniques. Some of these acharyas are authorized also to initiate new disciples in Kriya Yoga on behalf of the Master. I will never forget that in, uh, in the break, Baba came to me and uh, addressed me. And I was very surprised. I thought, why would he come to me from all these people to talk to me? And then he said, you are a yoga teacher. I said, yes. <laughs> and then he said, some years will pass, but then you will uh, come to teach Kriya Yoga. And I, I was very uh, astonished by this and uh, almost didn't believe. So that was the moment where he put me on the path. The master is a master in everything. He creates amazing sculptures with his own hands. Some of such sculptures adorn Kriya Yoga ashrams. He writes books composes the most complicated Indian ragas and songs, sings beautifully, manages construction process, and even he can operate an excavator. Every day the master supervises all his projects. Schools, hospitals, ashrams. He solves problems of monks and consults his disciples and does charity work. Entire Swamiji life is devoted to sincere, selfless and self-sacrificing service for the benefit of all world. 
And thus, his personal example shows us how the Kriya Yoga practice can help a person to develop all his strengths and qualities for the most noble purposes. Swamiji teaches that it is a great fortune to be born in a human body. Only via human body we can cognize the Divine. The main goal of human existence and true meaning of life is to achieve cohesion with the Divine, the highest state of Yoga. Kriya Yoga is a non-religious spiritual practice which is based on what every person has and what belongs to him or her by birthright. Breathing. That long and a deep breath will bring you to the state of a Brahma. That long and a deep breath is, I can show you, your inhalation, look at me, This inhalation is ikara, the sound ikara, the exhalation is sound rakara. This is ikara rakara, in between ikara rakara it is called iswara swakara. That is what already I told you before. So this is one step of inhalation. In Kriya Yoga, you have many type of inhalation which is always for smooth breathing and controlling your breath then automatically your sense organs are controlled your mind is controlled everything is controlled because your mind is not in your hand your sense organs are not yours it is not yours only your breath is yours so you have every right on your breath. So therefore, this breath control is self-control. Kriya experience is very different. Always one has to remember that this is formless experiences. It has no form, formless state. Then only you can enter into Samadhi. Samadhi bhavanarthe klesa tanu karanartha cha. Automatically, when you enter into Samadhi, then the pain and the problems of a body will disappear. That is what one has to practice Kriya. With these few words, I bless you all. Thank you very much.
via breath control, a person can learn to control his or her prana, the individual life force, as could be performed once long ago by perfect human beings.